Hey guys, welcome back to Biking Roots. Welcome back to Texas. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Today, we are going to be talking about drivetrains. In particular, your rear cassette, your derailleur, and we'll talk a little bit about the crank set because it affects this back here. You may ask yourself, well, uh, do I need to change my drivetrain? Maybe it's old. Maybe you're tired of a lot of chain slap going on and you want to upgrade to maybe some more range. So maybe a bigger cassette here and get rid of your front derailleur. Uh, it's a question we get asked quite a lot. One of the things I forgot to mention is these drivetrain options that we're talking about, they're only possible if you have a Shimano uh, 8 to 10 speed uh, spacing. So in, this, in the free hub body, this allows you to put on a cassette. Uh, if you do have a cassette, and but if it's only like a seven speed gears right now, you have to make sure that you don't have a short free hub body like this one. Um, so sometimes some kid bikes and some lower end bikes will come with only a spacing for a seven speed. So you can't fit the nine speed cassettes on here because it's too short. So you need an eight to 10 speed uh, longer free hub body. Uh, yes, you can uh, change your free hub body if you have a long enough axle. Uh, so then you could find a little bit longer free hub body that can go into your hub if you find the right compatibility. It can get technical, very messy um, with bearings and things. So it's not for the inexperienced or the novice, but it is possible. If you take off your wheel and you see like this cap thing here, that means you have a cassette. But if you take off your wheel and you see something like this, uh, this is called a free hub body, and so it is not the same as a cassette. And so these systems will not work if you have a free hub body. There are some uh, free hub bodies that have a wider range. Uh, some of them go even up to like a 34 tooth. So you're not going to have the same range as a cassette, but uh, if you don't want to change the whole wheel or change the whole hub out, but you just need maybe a little bit taller gears, there are some options that I'll link below if you want to get a bigger free hub body. Sometimes kid bikes, lower end bikes will have these. Um, they're heavier, they're a little noisier, but it could be an option without changing your whole wheel. All right, so let's first, we'll start at the front with the crank set. So your bike may have come with either a uh, two ring front or maybe three rings. And you have this front derailleur here and you may want to get rid of it. This crank set here, actually has chain ring bolts on the spider of the crank arm and you can actually remove these big rings small rings uh, take it off of the bike and then remove all these and then you could install a narrow wide chain ring without having to change your whole crank set which is nice but yours may not have that option you may just have a chain ring that's they're riveted together and so you cannot put a narrow wide ring on here because well, you just can't. So unfortunately, you're gonna have to change out your crank set and get rid of the ring. If you take off your crank and you have a square spindle thing, that means you have a square tapered. Uh, so sometimes though, you can find a square, uh, inexpensive square tapered like three ring like this guy, and you can remove these crank bolts. All right, today we're going to install a new drivetrain on this Iron Horse Yakuza. This started out as a pawn shop bike that I found uh, a little over a year ago and then Stripped it to the frame. It actually, Iron Horse used to be a pretty respectable brand in the mountain biking world, but they went belly up, got bought out. Uh, now it's it was a, a Walmart bike basically. Anyway, so right now this is uh, kind of my project bike slash loaner bike for friends. Uh, I installed a new uh, RockShock Judy fork on here. If you haven't seen the budget fork video, uh, I'll put a link there, but uh, so I've been testing out this fork. So on this Iron Horse, uh, you can see I went with a, a inexpensive Jiang Queen IXF. This is a an inexpensive crank set that I purchased. The links below if you want to try this one. I've used it on a few different bikes and it works fine. So this crank set that I use, this one uses an external cup bottom bracket as opposed to the uh, square tapered. What I wanted to do on this one today is change the drivetrain. Uh, get it a clutch back here. So you may ask yourself, well, why do you need a clutch? Uh, a clutch helps with chain slap. When you're off-roading, you hit a lot of bumps and this will bounce around. Uh, the narrow wide chain ring will help to keep it on, but it can still pop off because there's just not as much tension on here. A clutch, uh, this one is a SRAM SX clutch. So, so it has a little release button here to release the clutch so that you can take the wheel on and off. But 
it tightens up the drivetrain so it's not so loose and so hopefully you can keep your chain on the chain ring. If you have a Shimano version, you usually can see a little lever here. You can turn the clutch off and you can turn it back on. So when it's off, you can remove the wheel. This is very bouncy. When you turn it on, it firms it up so it's, it still moves, but it's not quite so loose. So different versions from different manufacturers. So a lot of manufacturers that if your bike comes with a uh, single chain ring up front, they will go to a pretty large cassette in the back. Not always 50 tooth like this one, but sometimes they'll go 42, 46. Do you need 12 gears and do you need such a big ring? Eh, I think that's up to you depending on where you live and your riding style. One thing to consider though is when you go to 12 speeds, you have very little space in between each cog. So little adjustments to get it to shift right. And I've had a few issues with some of my 12 speed drivetrains. And so what I want to try today is what if you went less than 12? What if you went to like eight or nine? All right, so this is gonna be part one of three videos. So a few different manufacturers have been releasing eight and nine speed drivetrains with clutches. And it's interesting because the cost is very affordable. All three of these are gonna be less than $150 for the cassette, the shifter, the derailleur, and the chain. And for part one, we're gonna install the MicroShift Advent. Uh, this is their nine speed. They also make an eight speed with a clutch that you could use. Uh, they also have one that doesn't have a clutch, but for mountain biking, we want clutches. All right, so part one is we're gonna test the MicroShift Advent system out, this nine speed 42 tooth uh, system for this week. And then next week, we're gonna test out the Sunrace. Uh, they have a nine speed system out now. Uh, 46 two, so it's a little bit bigger uh, low gear. The following week, we're gonna end with the Box Prime 4. So three different manufacturers that are not Shimano or SRAM that have uh, low speed drivetrain options with clutches. All right, so let's get this guy installed and take it out to the trails and see how it goes. Got the MicroShift Advent 9 installed and ready to go. Install wasn't too bad. So it's all adjusted and let's go try it out on the trail. Welcome to Timber Lane, out and about. Beautiful weather today. Uh, love riding here, it's very peaceful. You're right in the city, but you're out in nature. Oh. Oh, almost ran you over. What's up, man? On the Timberlane Trail uh, with the Iron Horse and the Advent system, uh, it did very well. I was uh, impressed with the shifting, a very quick response uh, to get to the gear that I wanted. And I didn't really have any complaints and it didn't feel that big of a difference from some of the other drivetrains. Over the last few years, I've been primarily riding 10, 11, and occasionally 12-speed drivetrain <laughs> systems from both uh, Shimano and from SRAM. One of the concerns and questions I had on the Advent and these other 8- and 9-speed drivetrain systems would be if I would notice the difference in the big gear changes. But honestly, at least here in the Timberlane Trail, I didn't really notice any difference, and it had plenty of range to get up some of the steep stuff. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put it in the low gear, 42 tooth. Uh, this is pretty steep for around here. All right, not too bad. All right, so back to the Iron Horse with the MicroShift Advent. Uh, I've been riding it for about 45 minutes or so. So far, no issues. Uh, everything's shifting, yeah, perfectly well. One of the things I'll quickly talk about is the shifter. So there's two shifters for the nine speed, one that has bearings, one without uh, five, maybe $5 difference or so. Uh, this one shifts pretty well, actually. I've been impressed with it. We'll see how it compares to the other systems. As for the long-term use, I know most drivetrains are gonna run pretty well when they're brand new. So, um, but you know, I'm gonna ride it for a week and see how it does. If you've been using the Advent for a while, uh, let me know in the comments below what your experience has been with it. I'm not gonna have time to do it for a long period of time, but at least for a week, I'll get my first impressions on the drivetrain. But for 135 bucks or so, a pretty sweet option. We'll see how it compares to 
the sun race and to the box system all right guys well that's going to wrap up this video on the microshift advent uh the first of three of the budget uh not eight nine speed drivetrain upgrades for your mountain bike so stay tuned for video number two if you like this video hit the like button for me uh, subscribe if you want to see more content i uh, hope you're doing well and we'll see you out on the trails bye